Hey, everybody. Welcome to a very special event here at ETH Denver. I am Doa. With me is Monte Cristo. For those of you who don't know us, we have been esports casters for a very, very long time. We lived in Korea for years where we together casted League of Legends, among other games. So it's great to come back, Monty, for this auspicious <laughs> occasion, this epic event, this esports battle extraordinaire, a royal rumble of epic proportions here at ETH Denver. We got the governor of Colorado, Jared Poles himself, versus another collection of esports, well, professionals, notable <laughs> esports characters. We'll, we'll leave it at that. We, it's going to be a good we, time, we though, isn't it? We have some people who work professionally in the yeah, esports yeah. industry as part of this. We do, we uh, do. And, and the reason why, why uh, Doa kindly agreed to come on to my stream and do this uh, with me just because, you know, he, I am a Colorado native. He is a hopeful future Colorado resident, as am I. So I, please I rule it bring out. more esports to Colorado. And uh, that's what we're, we're trying to do here. Uh, obviously when we take a look at this, we've got some Colorado State University players, some mm. University of Colorado players. Those guys aren't so smart. That's why they couldn't figure <laughs> out that University of Colorado would be UOC. They weren't that clever, so they kind of spell it CU. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Fort Collins with my father as a Colorado State University professor. Uh, so, you know, I, I do have some some bias towards the Rams, I would say. And some uh, I went to many CSU versus CU football games growing up. Okay. Um, and was mostly disappointed by the quality of the CSU football team. But I will not be disappointed today by the quality of the CSU esports teams. I believe that. Well, uh, let me just talk about my Colorado experience now, right? <laughs> I've I've never lived in Colorado, but I've visited many times. In fact, uh, before the Overwatch League began, we were out there every weekend for uh, for a bunch of stuff. Yep. Um, I've been to Garden of the Gods. That's a popular thing near near Denver. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I've been hiking in the in the Flatirons. That's been awesome uh, as well. So I know I love Colorado. I love whenever I get a chance to go there and. Of course, I love casting League of Legends with Monte Cristo. So, uh, <laughs> but before we get going with that, we actually have uh, something extra special as well. Monty, you interviewed the governor of Colorado in, in preparation for this match, didn't you? I did. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Governor Polis is a legit gamer. He, I remember when he was in the House of Representatives for uh, the U.S. Congress, and he was doing interviews about playing League of Legends. And this was back in like I don't know, 2013, 2012. So he's mm -hmm. been a, he's been playing League for a long, long time now, and has you know he comes from a tech background, and he's really interested in in supporting ETH Denver and the kind of progress of blockchain development and esports development in Colorado. Yeah, it is exciting. I was hyped about this event too because I've been I've been getting into learning about cryptocurrency uh, lately over the last year or two. I own a little bit of Ethereum myself, and of course, like crypto is going insane today with Bitcoin going through the roof. Ethereum, I'm pretty sure, is hitting its like highest high ever today. So I feel like it's a, it's an appropriate day for uh, for this to happen because it's such a significant day for uh, cryptocurrency right now. And it's been cool learning a little bit more of that through uh, watching some of the panels that I've checked out for uh, ETH Denver over the last uh, couple days. But uh, without much further ado, I, I I think are you ready to uh, to show people this interview that you? Did? I am. I am. It's very. Okay. It's very interesting. It's very <laughs> casual. It's very Colorado. Though, I will say that this this spirit right. of Colorado and Colorado casualness runs high in this video. I will say. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's check it out. I'm waiting for the scary blue horse to appear that's at the airport to greet you when you land. I don't know if that's going to happen. I can't guarantee it. Well, let's let's roll the interview. Let's check it out. <laughs> Today, I'm very fortunate to be joined by Governor Jared Polis from the state of Colorado, my home state, even though I currently live in Los Angeles. I'm a Fort Collins native myself. And what we're here to discuss is ETH Denver, which is the Ethereum and blockchain hackathon that's going to be coming up. And as part of that, uh, Governor, you're going to be playing in a League of Legends game that I will be casting with my longtime co-caster Doa with some other Colorado notables. Why don't we start off by having you tell us about your history in gaming and League of Legends, because you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, no, I, I've been playing League of Legends for a really long time, so um, it's fun. I, and then I, I kind of fell out of it for a few years. And then I went back back into it a few years ago, too. So it's it's been it's fun. Um, I usually do. Anivia or Maokai, those are my mains. Um, Maokai jungle, Anivia mid or top. Um, it's a lot of fun. I play it with my partner Marlin. Usually we we duo we duo, um, and it's it's a great game. It's a it's a you know you you never know who you're playing with on there. It could be uh, the governor of Colorado. It could be somebody <laughs> who's a billionaire. It could be a Saudi <laughs> prince. You never know. 
Yeah, it is. It is quite fun. And I had a similar experience of being very into it, falling out of it, back into it uh, again right now. So let's talk now uh, before we go into some more of the esports and streaming stuff about ETH Denver, uh, which is a blockchain hackathon event. Why are some of these uh, technology and blockchain, like really cutting edge technology projects important to the state of Colorado? So last year, I got to, were you at East Denver last year? I was not, no, I, was, I live in Los was, Angeles, so I can It was go. so much fun. Now it was pre-pandemic, so it was just like massive, now you'd call it like a germ fest. I mean, everybody like, you know, all packed up next to each other. So it's not, it's not the same now, but it was really a great community of hackers and coders in Colorado. Uh, people came from other areas too. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. So Colorado as a state has been uh, over the last couple of decades, really pushing into having technology startups within the state and has right. you know, contributed to the overall economy. And now that this pandemic has occurred and many more people are working remotely, are you taking any initiatives in order to kind of lure more people? Because, for example, I myself would love to go back to Colorado because of quality of life reasons. You know, I live in California, so lesser uh, state income tax is like a huge yeah. factor as well. So are you seeing an influx of people who are moving to Colorado in order to enjoy these things? And what are you planning to do in order to kind of attract more of these technology and white collar workers? Yeah, we absolutely are. And even within Colorado, uh, really Western Colorado, which are our iconic mountains, for those of you who aren't from Colorado, I mean, so many people want to live in our mountain communities, whether it's, uh, you know, Grand Junction or Eagle County or Summit County or Grand County. So um, there's actually been a boom in, in, in residential real estate in those areas, because if you have location independent, uh, location independent employment, why wouldn't you want to live in one of those amazing places? But also, of course, Boom for Fort Collins, Boulder, Denver, uh, as you indicated. We have a lot of jobs in those areas, but um, the ability to telecommute, um, and we're really doubling down on our economic development to promote companies that offer those kinds of opportunities. Excellent. And do you have any specific initiatives that you're able to talk about right now, or uh, just to expand a little bit? So first of all, we're um, doing a state investment of um, millions of dollars in broadband to connect more of our rural and mountain areas that otherwise, you know, it's a, it's a prerequisite, obviously, for not just working, but living. Um, secondly, uh, a lot of our economic development incentives that we have through our Office of Economic Development, we're aligning and we have a special program to help attract uh, folks that is part of it. Like if they say a quarter of our jobs are location independent, a quarter of our jobs are telecommuting, there's extra incentives for those kinds of companies to, to locate to, in, in Colorado. Is there anything that you're thinking about specifically when it comes to trying to get companies who are involved in new media like esports or streaming or gaming game developers come to to Denver in order to uh, set up shop and really offer permanent jobs to Coloradans instead of having uh, you know just DreamHack sweep through over a week? Also, we have a uh, gamer as governor. That, yeah, that you we, do. That's the most important thing. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. That's um, why we're no, having we have, this conversation. Our, <laughs> we have um, our high school, uh, Chaza, our high school sports have esports. Um, most of our colleges have teams. Uh, as you indicated, like there's nonstop flights to Japan, to Europe. Um, Denver's all in the middle of the country, which is great because like yes. you have gaming communities on the east and west coast. And it's like a whole day to get from one to the other. But it's like a quick trip to get to Colorado. You know, you, you're, this is music to my ears. This is yeah. what I love to hear. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I think it's well situated. I think we're on the map. We have a, a young, uh, great community. It's an amazing place to live because a lot of gamers, when they're not gaming, you know, we do enjoy the great outdoors, whether you go know, skiing, boarding, hiking, kayaking, you know. I, I do all of those. Yeah. So, yes. All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> you fit the demographic. Yeah. Um, I, I am the, de I'm a Colorado native. So I am the demo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I think it's great. And we are, we're all for it. We have some film incentives, by the way. I mean, we won't, we don't have the dollar amount of, of New Mexico, but we would be happy to see how we can target those for opportunities in gaming because we don't have enough to compete on kind of the Hollywood production side. We just don't. So um, we can target those around real opportunities to highlight Colorado assets and, and gaming. Yeah, I think uh, it, for the most part, though, we don't need Hollywood level mm -hmm. assets, right, in terms of our own productions. Um, so it's it, it's it's more about, I think, finding alternatives in our industry that are lower cost, cost while man maintaining that quality and also providing a quality of life um, that is that people you know, enjoy, because there's a, as you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people from the Bay Area from California that have a lot of fatigue of being in those places who are currently moving to Colorado, as a result of uh, being able to work remotely or changes in, in kind of their their employment style. 
Yeah, that's right. And we have a really um, a wide open, you know, way of looking at that. I mean, as you said, we have far lower taxes in California. It's, you know, 4.58, 4.5%. So it's much lower. But also, uh, we're leading the country in, in you know, marijuana law reform, um, all these things. We have we have marijuana delivery available in Colorado. Um, I think California might have that. I can't remember. We but do. We're, yeah, we're one of a few states. <laughs> as so, somebody who personally enjoys that. <laughs> yeah. And we were, <laughs> remember, we did beat, we did beat California. We legalized marijuana ahead of California. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. In fact, you know, that's that's one of the the kind of sponsors that we would be excited to to yep. kind of engage as an as an industry more. And, you know, hopefully we're, we're moving towards federal legality where that's going to become less of a, a hot button issue. But I mean, it's no secret that that many gamers enjoy a little bit of marijuana used responsibly if you're 21 and older. <laughs> yeah, sometimes tell when they're on my team and they don't perform. So. <laughs> they don't respond to your pings for assistance. Yeah, yeah. I know that's frustrating. I don't like personally. I, I don't like playing competitive games uh, while using marijuana responsibly. Well, I mean, that does, does anybody think it's performance enhancing? It's definitely no. not. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just not. I mean, you know. That's right. I, I appreciate that game at your best game at your peak at all times. Don't drag your teammates down. That's definitely, that's definitely my attitude. Yeah. So in terms of, in terms of the esports space, are you starting to think about, or the streaming space, because we have major streamers like summit who I believe yep. still lives in Colorado Springs. Um, are you thinking about ways that you can kind of lure more of these people into the States via into the state yeah. via various incentives or are, do you have ideas percolating well, you that you're know, at liberty to talk about? I mean, it's really just our, our quality of life. I mean, people, they, they can choose to live anywhere essentially. Right. Um, and, and so why not tout Colorado on its merits? I mean, you know, just the ability to um, you know, with, without go driving very far, be in the beautiful mountains. I mean, you know, we got, we got everything here. So um, it's really just touting it on our quality of life. Obviously, you need high-speed connectivity. All of our metro areas have that. Increasingly, many of our mountain areas do as well. So that's obviously a big focus uh, as well. But yeah, it's just, you know, you can live where you want. Why wouldn't you want to live in Colorado? <laughs> it's a great point. I know I do. Uh, going back to the connectivity, one thing that my hometown is doing in Fort Collins is providing fiber internet that's owned by the city. Is that something that you're carefully looking at to potentially roll out into other parts of the state? So it's permitted here. So that means that we, we let municipalities do this. Fort Collins is in the forefront. Um, there's Delta Montrose in Western Colorado did um, through their electric co-op did broadband internet. So we encourage creativity and innovation. I mean, there's no better or worth pass to it as long as you have inexpensive, you know, high speed access. Um, we're kind of agnostic about who the provider is, but having more competition for cable, big cable companies, obviously a good thing. I I love that attitude. <laughs> I wish I wish more places would do it because I know yeah, that. I, look, I live I live in a town Boulder where big cable works. It's great. We have Comcast. I'm very happy with it. But I mean, the more competition, the better, right? Yeah, I, and I think my experience has been similar in in big cities. Generally, I don't have issues. You know, I have AT and T fiber that works wonderfully for me here in Los Angeles, and I've never really had issues with it. But it, you know, it, at least in Fort Collins, I know from my parents' perspective, it has been a little bit tough in order to get quality internet there, and especially in more rural areas, it does seem like it it kind of has to be a public utility just because. In the cable company's eyes, the profit margin might not necessarily be there, but it is something that, as you stated earlier in our, our conversation, everybody absolutely needs at this point in time. And it can really help revitalize rural areas by having people with high incomes who can have remote jobs and still enjoy life the way they want to, uh, especially in a time where rural areas have been really hard hit by immigration to major cities we're doing a um one of our state stimulus items that we're working on with our state legislature is main street reinvestment dollars so we're seeking about 70 million in money that goes into basically uh supporting kind of main street improvements in a lot of small towns across colorado which is just it, it goes a long way to say you know five hundred thousand in invested in the small towns so outdoor areas uh you know benches uh broader boulevards facade improvements um really just to because that part of that quality of life whether you live in the downtown of a small area or you're in a rural area and you want to go into town it's really important to have that strong cultural vibrancy in town do you have any plans about uh kind of building out that any cutting edge industries in the future anything exciting that people should look out for coming up 
Yeah, I think, you know, part of it also is a chance to better yourself. We have great in-state tuition um, at our different programs, community college and college. A lot are oriented. Um, we have everything from game developing, visual arts, you name it. Um, uh, Colorado State University online, CSU Global, so people can do it fully online, even pre-pandemic. And it's, it's popular, one of the leading. My, uh, my father actually runs the honors program and is a professor at Colorado State, so I'm very oh, familiar. Go Ram. Go Ram. Um, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, whether you want the campus experience or, you know, you just want to, a lot of folks in, in gaming, I mean, they're not interested in the degree per se. They just want the knowledge, you know, for a particular area. And if you've learned best in a structured opportunity, there's an opportunity to get those inexpensively. Focusing on economic development dollars, absolutely gaming um, and, and everything associated with it is one of our big areas that we see as a growth opportunity for our state. Yeah, and if you are an esports fan, which I assume you are, if you're going to be watching this recorded interview, uh, I know at Colorado State, the largest club on campus is actually the esports club. So yeah. there's a huge engagement among the student bodies. I've had interactions with uh, CU's esports club as well, but there is a there's a significant enthusiasm, I can say, among among Colorado uh, college students. So certainly consider heading out to to Colorado if you're not a native and and looking for degrees out there. Well, thank you very much, Governor, for you. your time. Really appreciate this. And I'm looking forward to casting your game in a few days' time. Uh, you'll be seeing it right after this interview, most likely, as we're recording it uh, for release at that time. So thanks a lot. Looking forward to seeing you play. Thank you. Take care. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, that was a great interview. Monty, you had uh, so many questions, so many intelligent <laughs> things you had to say. But it's it's time to move on. Uh, unless you want to follow up on that. Do you have any any comments? You know, now, now that you're reflecting on that interview, anything you could have done better? Let's let's uh, let's give yourself some feedback here. Let's go through this. Uh, I could never do anything that I do better. That's actually impossible. Mm -hmm. So I was very pleased with the way that interview turned out. I do have some uh -huh. tips for Governor Polis, though. I really oh. would like him to say, we are giving tax breaks to esports business. I was disappointed <laughs> that he didn't commit to that instantly in our very casual interview. So that's something to work on for the future, though. Hey, esports Mecca, <laughs> Colorado. It's, it's possible. It's possible. There's other city. I mean, Minneapolis coming up. You know, Denver, you got to watch out. Gotta watch get out, out get out of here with your Minneapolis. You this gotta, is a Colorado stream. <laughs> I'm just saying there's some threats out there that need to be considered very seriously. But you know what? I've got my my iridescent spork. I am I'm ready to move on. Let's check out the teams that are going to be playing today. Let's check out Team Buffacorn first. Now, Team Buffacorn is uh, of course being helmed by uh, some people we know quite well. Pyrotechnics, of course, uh, a veteran of the LPL Chinese scene, as is and Kelsey you, Moker and as you. well. And EU and LCS. The, that's right. Uh, and EU for, LCS for pyrotechnics. He's also mm -hmm. a University of Colorado graduate, so he that's has right. he has that Colorado legacy. And Kelsey Moser, my friend, uh, who was doing 100 Thieves Academy, doing LPL stuff for years, now is working for Evil Geniuses, doing uh, North mm -hmm. American talent development. She is a Colorado native as well, so we do have. Wow you know, native or, or Colorado adjacent people here. But I think they're called Team Buffacorn because we have Carson, who is the captain of the CU League of Legends team here, even though Kopari is in fact a Colorado State student. So mm -hmm. I think he's he is betraying a little bit by representing the buffs. Or is it more like kind of a Goku Vegeta thing where they're like joining together, you know, at a crucial moment? No, it's no. never oh. like that in Colorado <laughs> University. <laughs> and Jordan Jordan Spence... than I expected. Okay, well, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. Let's take a look at Team Gov. Okay, Jordan Spence, Spence, by oh. the way, is the CMO at my crypto, so that he's representing oh, right. more of the uh, the cryptocurrency side of ETH Denver, which is like most of it. Uh, but he was also with League PD and Azubu for years, so he has worked in the esports space. Indeed. All right, moving on to uh, Team Gov. Well, obviously we've got Governor Jared Polis as well, but there's there's some scary players on here. Legit Korea is uh, one of the very best players on the ladder at the moment. He is uh, a force to be reckoned with. I don't I don't know how lopsided challenger these player. Teams, <laughs> I don't know how lopsided these teams are going to be right now, uh, but uh, it it might it might get messy. Yeah, and Krasuit also is the GM of Simplicity and Flamengo Esports. Flamengo is one of the biggest football clubs in Brazil. They now have a CB LOL spot, so that's very exciting. Kichi is the head of the LOL program at CSU, so we should expect some skill out of him. And Kowalczyk is from the School of Mines, so a player over there. And of course, Governor Jared Polis, longtime League of Legends player and fan. So really, 
No, no slackers on this team either. I, I yeah. like how they gave the governor the challenger player. That was really nice. <laughs> <of that. laughs> it, it was, it was kind, you know. But it's also, you know, we're doing everything we can to, uh, you know, uh, grow esports right in Colorado. So hey, maybe the governor has a good game, and maybe that helps. Maybe that helps down the road. I don't know. I'm not surprised that Governor Polis would would democracy. align himself with Colorado State University too, considering it is oh. the superior university in Colorado. So I would understand why he would want to be on that team. I have no horse in this race, so uh, <laughs> I, I cannot I cannot comment. But it sounds like we're ready for the draft right now uh, to get into the game. So let's go ahead and uh, do that here and see what people pick. Now it will be blind pick, so we could get yes. two shens. That that is a possibility. It's something that we have some experience with, though. So that's that's good. <laughs> we won't go into the blind. When when they asked us whether it should be blind pick, <laughs> we said yes for two reasons. Of one of which is because we wanted two shens, and the second mm. of which is because we definitely want people playing their best picks here and not having Absolutely. bans. Even though you know nobody knows Governor Polis's real account, he has he has uh, you know been smurfing here, obviously. Uh -huh because he, he wants to continue to play League of Legends in relative secrecy and not have yeah. his lull chat held against him at a public level, which I think is something we can all appreciate. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it's hide on Bush, is, uh, the, <laughs> which is not a political pun. That's that's a faker pun. Yeah, I think it, I think wow. his name is Tarzan, but you know that's why he never went pro. <laughs> just to, you know, Tyler we can't, we can't have that getting uh, public. Well, you know, we can't have that out getting out publicly because the things he types in <laughs> chat are just just abhorrent. That's that's right. Yeah, that's right. we gotta we gotta protect. We got your back, uh, Governor Bowles. Don't worry, don't worry. We're not revealing anything. All right, we got Ari locked in for legit Korea. No big surprise there. The governor of Colorado himself is locked in Anivia. Okay, we heard he likes Anivia Maokai. Uh, Maokai didn't surprise me. A tree's main in Colorado. That should shock no one. <laughs> but go I'm actually super India. disappointed he didn't play Maokai. <laughs> yeah, you know that now that's the only time I get to make that joke. Not during the riff, not when we're on the riff, but whatever. You know, we got a Jin for Kichi. We got Udir for uh, Croset. We have uh, Rel being played by Kowalczyk. Oh, Pyra did play Singed. I know that is what he considers to be his best champion. Kapari on the Silas, Ezreal, Carson, Sona, Spence Coin. And it looks like Remark Soon will be orange. <laughs> Remark Soon is Kelsey Moser. Right. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Kelsey on the orange. Kelsey See, on I'm, the orange. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a TFT main now. So so all of this, when I see Silas, I'm like, oh, yeah, he was Moonlight Brawler, but he's not in 4.5, so I haven't seen him for a while. Do you think, you know, we, we are going to have to wait for the spectator delay right, here right. for a minute, guys. So sorry about that. But we can talk about this. So it appears that Kelsey Moser is going to be jungling Orn, which would mm. mean that Pyrotechnics is going to be in a lane against the top Anivia of Jared Polar, Naturally. the governor of Colorado. Is he going to proxy farm against the governor? That seems really BM. I don't well, know if I would have the balls to proxy farm against the, the it's governor. It's also quite a story. <laughs> also quite a story, you know. And and you know, we knew when we got into esports years ago, someday we would uh, peak when we got to cast Pyrotechnic versus the governor of Colorado. <laughs> that I, was. I would not have believed you if you had told me this <laughs> like three years ago. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, the thing is, we've we've done some celebrity show matches before in the past. The the most noble one I can think of is we did do a show match between the CEO of Intel and Mark Cuban back at like some uh, some ESL <laughs> event. Remember that? Yeah. I, am, I, I am. Yeah, yeah. In the Sharks arena. That was quite interesting. That's right. We were in a shark tank of a different kind. <laughs> that one. Well, I think that, that the nickname of that stadium is the shark tank. So that was actually surprisingly meta. It was it was very on point for a Mark Cuban experience. That's that's for sure. That's one where he was uh, he was dropping f bombs and uh, getting extra money for charity. That's that's right. Yeah. He was he was yeah. on stage. That was that was quite charming. That's uh, right. Now, he uh, never invested in that esports team. In fact, said it was a terrible business publicly. So he's not wrong. He's not he, wrong. <laughs> he became a a Wall Street bets enthusiast uh, after that. I I had heard. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about Mark Cuban. Let's let's get back to the game at hand in our, our current celebrity show match. Like we said, Pyrotechnics versus Governor uh, Governor Polis. That is really going to be sort of like the the premier matchup, I would say, because ranking doesn't matter in this. Come on, let's be honest here. Yeah, I and I think the jungle matchup, uh, Krasuit using mm. the very meta pick of Udir 
right now. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, that's a little bit. Do you think that's kind of bad form? We know Udyr is insane right now. <laughs> I, I, look, I have boomer hands, okay? Which means that it's very hard for me to have mechanics in any game, but you yeah. know, League of Legends being one of those. So as you know, I've always played Udyr, so the fact that Udyr is mm. meta now is absolutely wonderful for me. I'm enjoying the boomer hands meta of Olaf, Hecarim, Udyr. This is my time to shine on the ladder, though. <laughs> All right. I just played an uh, absolutely killer uh, Blitzcrank game. So my mechanics are still on point. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's some games. I will 1v1 me, bro. Like, we're going to take a quick break, though. Apparently, when we come back, we'll get this game started. All right, here we are coming into the game, and it is time to see what these teams are made of. <laughs> what, what are they made of, Noah? Uh, Human flesh and blood. Human flesh and blood? That's what their bodies are made of. That's what they're made of. Oh, it's mostly carbon. I've been watching Breaking Bad lately. <laughs> I learned that. Yeah, you're like 10 years too late on that one, buddy. I know, I know. Well, my <laughs> wife hasn't seen it, so we're rewatching it. So I get like one hour of total depression a day when I watch an episode <laughs> of that show. It's very I, good but still. Ooh, wow, big time invade actually from our yeah. blue team here from a team gov. Oh, the bait. Oh, the kind of bait. <laughs> Kowalczyk's kind of just going out there with the rel. They're all right. Well, you know, they invaded, but they didn't really want to go all out for the, uh, the, the surprise of the blue buff, I guess. So they're going to retreat back into their own jungles. Oh, well. Person I appreciate the, the try hard of it, though. The try hard yeah. nature. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice my. Stuff. Yeah. Jared Polis with a double stun on the Anivia Q to start off the game. Yeah. That's a good great. way. It's a good way to do it. Indeed, it is. Wow. Singe starting All with right. a dark seal. That's, uh, that's a bold play. <laughs> Dude, when you are going up against, uh, you know, a sitting governor, but he's not actually, he's going up against legit Korea with that top lane Ari. So. I think nope. Pyrotechnics nope. has his work. He's, go, he's going up no, he's against not. the Anivia. Oh, you're right. Okay, so here's what happens. Like, when you cast games and everything is done for you, they move the champions around so everything is in the proper lane. Not like this right now. All right. I like well, how uh, Governor Polis is not running teleport, but is running heal instead. <laughs> this, I wonder what he's going to do with this. Is he planning on using ghost heal to, like, chase down the Singed? He's also tanking the caster minion wave and taking a lot of damage. So, so far, it's, maybe it's a maybe it's a next level bait. 
I mean, this is called posturing, Monty. Pyrotechnics, look at that. He walked right into that stun. He had no chance. This is the governor of Colorado we're talking about. Have you never seen a sitting governor play in a League of Legends show match before? Because I've seen hundreds. You've I, seen hundreds. I know. I, they all play. Who's, the, who's play. the best governor in the in the League of Legends Governor Bowl? Uh, Schwarzenegger was pretty good back when uh, you know he had a very early version of League of Legends at the time. You know, but uh, yeah, nothing about that. Let's move on to something I obviously can't uh, can't talk about. It's classified, but. <laughs> oh, oh Pyrotechnic's getting aggressive. He actually is taking a lot of damage here from this Anivia. You know, Singed, if you, here's the thing. You gotta be a bold Singed, right? You gotta walk up and flip him. You can't just walk up and take the damage. Ooh, a little bit of aggression from a Kowalczyk there, actually. Oh, Kichi, though. Kichi takes a bit, a bit of hits on the Jin. It was actually a Jin Rel bot lane that I dominated this morning on my Blitzcrank, by the way. This is bringing back some great <laughs> memories. Hours ago. Is, is that right? Is that right? Who, right. Is, who is your AD carry in lane? Callista, and they were amazing, actually. They never threw me in unless they knew my ult was up and just followed up on all my hooks. Like, it was a dream. It was a dream bot lane to be matched with. It was great. We got to call it bot lane, not ADC anymore. Times have changed, Monty. It's not even Marksman I anymore. <laughs> I like how Governor Polis just face tanked the wave so he could freeze this lane and then build it up. This guy playing close to his turret, his Udyr yeah. getting the top crab, protecting the governor, right? He knows what he's doing. And the thing is, is Pyra's going to have a hard time doing that proxy farming that we talked about, right? Oh, there's a flash engage onto the Sona. That's a lot of problems for Spence Cone. Meanwhile, Carson not really worried about it. Firing into quality. Oh, nice. Kapari comes down. First blood, though does go in the favor of Team Gov, but it's an even trade at the end of the day. Yeah, that TP though. So it was a recall coming in from the mid lane because legit nope. Korea was uh, dominating there. And now we have a gank up top. Well, I Kelsey mean, Mo I Kelsey Moe's are looking, trying to dominate the governor. Only That's level right, two? To... Well, you know, the thing is, is, is Kelsey, and, Kelsey and Pyra have the, uh, have the, uh, LPL synergy. You know, they used to work together on the LPL back in the day. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So they've, they've probably played a game or two together in the past. Might, might have been a while, but I'm sure it's all coming back to them now. <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned about this Orn and the fact that mm. it's four minutes, 45 seconds, and Kelsey is only level three. <laughs> just... 13 CS? <laughs> not probably where you want to be at five minutes. Pyro getting some health back. You know, he has gained the CS lead over uh, Jared Paulus's Anivia. So he does have that going for him, at least. I like a legit Korea is uh, calling out his abilities. Surely his <laughs> team will follow up on that. <laughs> I'll play. I have no doubt. Pursuit is trying to gank this oh. Silas. Yeah, coming in. Flash, bear, slap. Oh, the charm does land, and he is going to go in for the stun. So a good okay. amount of damage on uh, Kapari there. <laughs> not bad. Meanwhile, Orn is having a little bit of trouble with the Raptors. Oh no! No, not like this! No, not like, not this. like this! Oh, Kelsey! Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> I kind of don't hate to see it. I find it amusing. <laughs> you know, I, I meant you in sort of a generic sort of uh, sense. There's a flip. He flipped the bird. I can't believe he flipped the bird at the governor of Colorado. That is that so is offensive. Fun. Pyrotechnic. Kira. Wow. Please, you can get fined for that. <laughs> Have you no decency? <laughs> Have you no decency, you know, Lyra? Let's put politics aside here and just play a good, clean game of League of Legends, okay? Fire <laughs> techniques, please. <laughs> I, I like how Governor Polis is, has just frozen. You know, he is he's role playing the ice bird, freezing this lane the entire time. Uh huh. Pyra says he didn't mean to flip the governor. He just typed it in chat, but I don't know. It doesn't look like Governor Polis is really having any of that. He's just helping anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have a roam here from Legit Korea into the bot lane. That's right. Legit Korea coming down. Ooh, he lands the. Oh, did he not connect with the charm? No, Carson flashes away. Do they get the Ezreal? They do indeed. Kowalczyk steals that one away, as a bloodthirsty support should. I'm a fan of Kowalczyk now. You know, he's he's won me over. He earned that kill, and I'm I'm proud that he took it. So we still yeah. have the Silas in the mid lane there. Krasuit, he, he's he's popping his bear stance very late on these ganks. <laughs> Leaves me with a lot of questions. It's Kelsey on the jungle ward, coming around with the pink ward, controlling the vision game. That's she had Coach three. Kelsey. 20 CS at this point. 20 CS. All right. 10 times two. 
lurking around the yeah. bot side. Right. Ping, pings on Kelsey. <laughs> uh huh. You know, Kopari's uh, keeping up pretty well in this lane against legit Koreas. He's 12 CS down, but you're not, you know, you're not going to be too surprised to see that with a Silas versus uh, Ari matchup. You know, very common matchup. We see it all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very good right now in the current meta. Very strong. You've analyzed this matchup for a countless hours. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey Moser does manage to claim the blue buff. That will help. You know, that the real help. The, the real problem for Team Buffacorn right now is that uh -huh. They need this Silas to roam, but, you know, they don't really have a lot of opportunities because this Orn is pretty oh. underleveled. Gonna come in oh, for a gank, though. Here we go. All right. Yep, that's right. Here comes Kelsey. Uh, does land the Q. There's a breath. Can they slow down legit Korea enough? Looks like they've got this. <gasps> no, they don't. Chris coming in. And now Kelsey in a lot of trouble has to flash on the Orn, but leaves Kopari on his own. Carson coming up to try to make something happen here. Misses the Q. Can he get the closeout? Oh, legit Korea finally finished off. But it is going to be two kills oh, on no. Team Gov side of things. They're going to find an easy one on to Carson as well. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, the 1v1 continues. All right. Spent curtain call. Fight. Curtain call. But, you know, a full health Sona, I don't know. You're going to need some help with Kowalczyk with that one. He does land the slow, and that's going to let Kruis uh, catch up. Gets the stun. Gets the kill. Another one for the bear. <laughs> yeah, when you tag the Sona with the curtain call, though, you can follow up with the Jin W root. Oh, my. Exactly. The yep. solo kill in top lane. He did it. Jared Polis asserting <laughs> his dominance. That's right. He's governing this top lane. <laughs> That's, that was the lowest effort <laughs> joke I've ever made. And I'm so sorry. Did you did you ever wonder if his last name is Polis, which is the word for a Greek city state, right? Really? Yeah, but he's governing oh. a regular state. Don't you find that a little <laughs> bit weird? Well, we don't like really if he was the mayor of Denver, I would kind of understand it, but it's it's strange that he would be named Polis and the governor of an entire state. I mean, just moving up in the world, I guess. You know, that's right. <laughs> I stop at just a city. Next, the world. I mean, maybe next the presidency, but after that, the world. One step at a time. Uh, would get misses the charm there, but uh, it's okay. It is seven to two and kills overall for uh, Team Gov. Oh no. The she grab the was block. not taken. The grab Why did she use made? the blast oh, code? Dude. Why did she use the blast code? <laughs> well, she did use it now, but uh, it only pushed her still further into the jungle. Now Pyrrha coming in. It was all a clever bait. Was it? Was it? Pyra on the run. He hopes they chase him. He is. You know, he is. Oh! Governor Polis lives. <laughs> wow. Pyra I think, <laughs> trying to get him to chase him because he's like, haha, chasing a singe, lol. But nobody <laughs> fell for it. Meanwhile, Kowalczyk goes in. There's a root on the zone of the W from Singe coming in, but he does manage to stop down Kichi's damage for the a second anyway. They do escape. This game is action packed, Monty. This game is <laughs> delivering exactly like I hoped it would. I feel like I feel oh. like the buff of course might be uh might be softballing a bit for the governor. Maybe a bit. Kowalczyk down though. Whoa! Oh, now no. around. Legit Korea. Oh, take it out! And so wait, let me get this straight. Pyra loses the 1v1 to Governor Polis, but then he wins a 1v1 versus legit Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, so by transitive property, then that means that Governor Polis is like a top challenger player right now. Wouldn't surprise me. Wow. Where We got to find that main account. Yeah. All right. This Orn is finally level five. I love how Kelsey's playing because she's just <laughs> she's just using pathing <laughs> to, to try and counter jungle. Yep. Kowalczyk's there, though. I mean, it's smart, though. You know, your your bot lane wins. Wall. You're able to take Ooh. some of those Krugs and then and then escape. Yeah. That's true. That's how you do it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta take your opportunities when you find them. If and if you can't find them in your own jungle, you just gotta go and try to steal from Kel the other Kelsey, side. Kelsey reminds reminds me of how I jungle because if you look at my stats, <laughs> like I have like legit like an A or A plus in map control, and then I have like a B or B minus in combat, <laughs> according to the lol client. I, I just I up. just play I just play counter jungling and objectives. I gotta look that up. I'm sure I'm S rank though. It's a lot of damage on Pyre. He does get the slow on the Governor Polis, but. Governor Polis, you know, I I I really respect his uh, his play style here. It's very safe. He's not taking any risks he doesn't need to. Meanwhile, there is a dive going on in bot lane. Legit Korea comes in and they absolutely blow up Spence coin. No question there. Rel taking a lot of this turret damage though. And I mean a lot of this turret damage. Rel nearly down. Kowalczyk 
was taken out, but it does lead to the double kill, though, for Legit Korea. Makes it happen. Kowalczyk actually lived, by the way. Oh, nice block. The Ari blocking the curtain. Call! Oh, <laughs> there oh, were three also... people who didn't block for him. <laughs> 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 he had a chance. I like how Chris Hewitt put on the turtle stance and then didn't block the shot. <laughs> also, oh, Mario, take it. Ooh, flash fair slap onto Kelsey. I had to say it once. You know, you can't blame me. It, it is the most fun thing to say. A fine, quick shot as it is. It Meanwhile, is Governor Polis in the top the lane, he did get his, uh, his Anivia passive popped uh, yeah. by Pyrotechnics on the Singe, but it right. was under turret, so there was no real follow up. Yeah. He was also given the blue buff by his team, which I think is very nice of them. Yeah. Oh, Charm into another combo. Kapari chasing down legit Korea. He was able to use Ari's own abilities against her. Wow. Turnabout he... is fair play. <laughs> he keeps taking the Ari ult with Silas, yeah. which has been fun to watch. Couldn't quite get the kill the first time, but that time ends up working out just perfectly. Indeed. All right. Well. The governor of Thank Colorado you. has come down to the mid lane now. Oh, but he's running into a strong Silas and Kopari. Yeah, sure. You got away with it, Pyrotechnics, but not Kopari. Kopari's going to get himself caught, though, between Kowalczyk and Krusit. That bear doing work, but the Silas is pretty tanky. He does have the support from Spence Coin. Now the Sona ult comes out. Kowalczyk under turret, though, and he's able to back away. That's a lot of minion damage, though, but he's on a horse, and his horse is amazing. He's going to be able to get out. <laughs> no one gave it a lick, though. Oh, Kirk well, College at Korea. Doesn't land the uh, charm on the Carson, so Carson gonna back up. There's the Ornault, does get uh, dodged by Orn himself, which is not really what you wanna do. <laughs> Ooh, flash after the charm. Oh, Kelsey. Oh. Ke Kelsey's, oh, Kelsey was charmed, so couldn't actually get the Orn, the second hit on the oh, Ornault. Yeah, That's right. such a bummer. It is. Meanwhile, Ketchy's reloading his gun under the tower. <laughs> this is this is uh, what they call a fiesta, though. I like how Ketchy oh, tower man. dives while Jin is reloading his gun. That's yeah. quality. That's I, quality. I respect the fiesta, though, because that brings back another Colorado institution in Casa Bonita. It's a Casa Bonita <laughs> shout out by the, the fiesta we've got going on, the clown fiesta in this game right here. Kowalczyk, though, gets ganked. Good gang from Pyrotechnics. Working with Kapari to set that one up. They're going to go for the dragon. Wow. This is the first time here at nearly 15 minutes that a team has paid attention to the dragon. <laughs> That's an objective. You know, I'm really disappointed that Casa Bonita is not a sponsor of Gaming with Governor. Imagine if this was Gaming with Governor brought to you by Casa Bonita. Right. Or ETH Denver. Come on, Casa Bonita. Step it up. <laughs> Step it up. You got a lot of free promotion from that South Park episode. We got to take it one step further now. Come on. Tragically, they've probably been closed because of COVID for a long time. Yeah, that's true. That, that gorilla's just been in there doing like dives off that waterfall by himself for the whole year. Very sad. <laughs> Casa Benita, I like how if you don't yeah. know what Casa Bonita is, you have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's, uh, look it up. Look it up. Google Casa Bonita. <laughs> and then be sad that you can't eat their terrible food and watch cliff diving gorillas. It's not about the taste, it's about the experience. That should be their slogan, <laughs> by the way. All right, Sona Alt, does it save him? No, Legit Korea grabs the uh, kill anyway. Ooh, but it is a trade. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, oh no, Kelsey Mosier caught out completely. The governor of Colorado comes by just to check things out. He's like, all right, good work, everyone. That's called delegating, and he's gonna go back up to the top lane. They go delegate some more minion waves. <laughs> Kelsey, Kelsey got baited by Kapari, who is at turret. So Kelsey thought, that uh, she'd come around on the Orn and uh, collapse with Kapari, but uh, Kapari uh, wasn't there to help out, tragically. So I feel like Pyra's plan this game is is scaling, right? He's going for that late game singed power spike with his- Oh my God, Kapari. Gets lead. That is bold, man. He's gonna cause the egg. All right, wait for the egg, wait for the egg. Oh, oh wow. No, no, that was <laughs> tragic. <laughs> He just slapping the governor with some chains, you know, like you do. I, I like the little delay, too, because that means it's just going to be that much longer. Just one second, two seconds longer for Governor Polis to respawn. Clever move, as it does give them maybe this Rift Herald. Well, I mean, they were going to take it anyway, but maybe they have a chance to take it away. We'll see. Probably not. Yeah, I think this I think this Rift Herald's definitely going to go over to Team Gov. Seems Pick that way. Pick them up some extra gold. It You know... Credit to Team Buffacorn, they're actually sort of coming back in this game. 
They were down well, like, like three thousand gold at like two minutes into this game, and that gap clearly. hasn't grown. So it's clearly a late game scaling situation for Team <laughs> Buffercorn. All right. <laughs> They're just waiting it out. Soon that 3k gold deficit is not going to matter at all. Just wait. All right. They found the ward. Nicely done. Enjoy the gold. Going to go for all the Orin upgrades. That's the strat. That's right. I mean, the stylus does have seven kills. Yeah, I mean, Kopar is doing quite well. He's going to find Kowalczyk near his own blue buff. You know, legit Korea coming down. He's going to keep him zoned away. Here comes the Ornald. Oh, it does uh, not connect again, I believe, but Carson does find a kill here. So that's another one for Team Buffercorn, and they're going to chase down Crescent as well on this uh, Udyr. And hey, you know, it's only about a 2K deficit now. That's not that much <laughs> when it's 30K to 28K. Yeah. We'll see if there's a turret that's going to be taken by Governor Polis right now. He's clearing that minion wave with his ult. And Kelsey, again, CC'd during the Orn animation. So he can't, she can't push the ram Pyro. back over. Now gonna Pyro. dive legit Korea. Yeah, that's right. Pyro's gonna go after legit Korea. And meanwhile, Spence coin tanking the turret, but Kichi manages to turn that into a kill. Curtain call on the Kelshi Mosier, and that's gonna be another one for the Jin. Kichi uh, starting to rack him up. 616 already gets a double kill right there, as you can say. That's a nice route on the Pyro into the charm. There's no escape for Singe now. And Pyrotechnics, uh oh, one, two, three is not a great stat line, but. And his CS lead is shrinking. Only four ahead of the governor now. Yeah, Governor Polis got the top lane in the middle of that fiasco. Kichi really showing the superiority of Colorado State Rams mechanics uh, over Team Buffacorn right there with the Jin ult. I'm impressed. Six, yeah. one, and seven overall. 13 out of 19 on kill participation. That's that's really good. It's He's really a big good. threat. That's right. I mean, it's really Kopari on the uh, Buffacorn side of things. I mean, Carson's not doing too badly, but on the other side, it really is. Kichi with that great Jin stat line. I mean, so here, here's the here's the here's the problem, Doa, is that I don't think that this this Buffacorn team is going to be able to kill anybody with these builds. They have a Leandries in the mid lane, and then I'm not even sure what is going on with this Terabad Ezreal build that I'm looking at. <laughs> I mean, I, they change all the item icons. I don't even recognize anything anymore. It's it's irrelevant to me. They are going to find Kopari, though, in the enemy jungle. He was trying to be a hero. He does get a little bit of a slow, but I think he's going to have to hope for a, a death to the turret. Oh, but the shutdown goal is going to be... Exactly. It's still going to go over the Jin. That's the worst person possible that they could give that to. Oh, no, Pyra takes a turret shot, and that's going to give another one to legit Korea as well. It's slipping away, Monty. We curse them. Yeah, we did. So, I mean, the Ezreal build is going to be doing quite a bit of damage to low armor targets. So, true, true. yeah, there there is some possibilities here, especially if he wants to focus down either the AD carry or the mid laner. Yeah. Look at Qualtrics' horse. His horse is amazing. It turns into armor. Oh, it's going to be Infernal Drake now and uh, trying to be stolen away by Team Buffacorn. Can they grab it? There's going to be a fight over this. I don't think Team Gov wants to give this one up easily. Dragon regaining health, and yeah, they're going to have to back away. Uh, everyone's backing away. Wow. These teams are more careful than some of professional teams I've seen in the past. <laughs> well, they're taking a lot of hits from this Infernal, though. That's the problem. Yeah, Nobody's are. going after the crab, either. The crab That's is right. just sitting there. Uh oh here's a curtain call. Carson in a lot of trouble. They're going to try to pick him off. Meanwhile, Kowalczyk tangling with the Kapari up on top. Governor Polis has taken a lot of damage as well. There's another one for legit Korea, though. And there are going to be a couple kills going down on each side. But blue team does claim the dragon. Team Gov does get that infernal Drake buff. And now it's just a matter of cleanup. Pyra trying to get something done. But this fight is over, man. Can he get anything? I don't think so. He tosses the governor of Colorado getting poisoned into the egg now. And you can ult the egg, really? Did I just see a Sona ult on an Anivia egg? <laughs> I don't think the egg's going anywhere. <laughs> you you did see a Sona ult on the Anivia no. egg, though. Uh, I, I I can confirm that that is I, a thing that happened. I've, I've heard that you know during during pregnancy, if you play music for for the baby, you know it, it you know if it's classical music, ah, it makes yes. it smarter or something. So I suppose we can kind of translate that to like Sona playing music for the egg. <laughs> Yeah, but it's actually impossible for Governor Polis to be smarter, so it's ineffective. <laughs> you know, it's very that's, ineffective. That's that's true, I suppose. And, and, you know, it has to be the right kind of music as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs>
It's just my theory, all right? It's based <laughs> science, but it may not be rooted in reality. Those two things are mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this gold gap really hasn't grown at all this whole game. No. And with the, ornal, the, with the ornaments eventually coming in, although Kelsey Moser um, is three levels behind in the jungle right now, so it's going to be correct. a bit until you can actually start upgrading items. Uh, however, I think, yeah, we have to wait and see the damage output of this composition because they have a lot of damage over time or they can do damage to kind of low armor targets. But... Yeah. Now, as the as Rel and Udyr get tankier, because this Udyr is going to be building full full tank, basically, it might be very very difficult to win these team fights for Team Buffacorn. You know, I I will say they they have a lead, of course, but it's not an unthrowable lead. So we'll see. Anything can happen in a game like this. <laughs> in you know, a I game mean, we of League of Legends. <laughs> A game of League of we we casted SKT versus KT, you know, that uh, that summer finals back in the day. But you know, this could get crazier. They're chasing the Singe, Doa. Yep, that's right. They're also uh, chasing legit Korea in the bottom jungle. Meanwhile, Pirate does get chased. He's gonna do a good amount of damage to crush it. <laughs> All right, they'll back off. Yeah, why not? Yeah, Take if you're on the legit the Korea, pop hole, you're just not gonna catch him, even if you are Udir. Legit Korea. Yeah, he's gotten some kills, but he's also been throwing with his map awareness at times. He's been inting a bit, yeah. Not gonna lie. It's been some dubious uh, moves here. All right. W doesn't connect with Carson, so they can't really follow that one up that much. Everyone's going back. All right, time to regroup. Ooh, is this a barren opportunity? I no. only say that because the teams are watching. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, no one's back. Just no, you, we're, we're on a delay, fortunately, but no, is it, you know, the thing about it is you, you really can't commit to the Baron if that Anivia is alive, because you'll just ult the pit and absolutely <laughs> dominate you. Also, curtain call. So, yeah, the, you, you have to get a few more kills, I'm afraid, if you're Team Buffercorn and, and actually want to go for that Baron. I think Team Gov, they are, they're looking to stack these, these Drakes right now. I mean, yeah. you're still two away because... 15 minute first Drake was very late. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, if I was that Udyr, I just would have soloed it against that underleveled Orn. But maybe he doesn't know. I don't know. It is going to be a Baron though for Team Gov. They hey, can, I talked about it. They can do it, it very fast with the Anivia ult. That's the thing. Let's let's face it, Monty. I'm better at analyzing these types of games than you are. All right. No, I'm saying against. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't try. Come on, <laughs> in. They do take the Baron. Now can they win the team fight? Sona all comes back, hits Caressa. It does prevent the Udia from coming in, but it doesn't prevent Legit Korea from picking up one. Now Kowalczyk on the run. There's going to be the Ornault coming through. Kelsey Moser, oh, stunned, so she can't send it back. And now they're going to turn their attention onto the Rel. Uh -oh. And Team Gov cleaning up the fight. Spence coin, the last one standing, the last one to fall. And with the Baron buff, how far can they push this? Do you think they can actually end here, Monty? Or is this a little mm, bit cool? No, not with 20 yeah, seconds left on a couple of them, but they can definitely get yeah. in him and maybe one of the Nexus turrets here. If they do have the minion wave with them, which they do in the, the, the Baron buff, but they're really, yeah. really low and they need to recall. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's a safe play, isn't it? And and uh, they have been doing that pretty well. Man, I got to shout out Kichi again on this gin. 10, 1, and 11 right now. Insane stat line for the Jin. Legit Korea redeeming himself a little bit. 10, 5, and 6. Now he's doing well. And, uh, you know, the governor of Colorado, Jared Polis himself, <laughs> holding strong with a 2, 3, 8 on the Anivia. A respectable, respectable stat line. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's doing well. His walls, his zoning have been good. It was absolutely the right call to go for the Baron there when you have the opportunity and you have... You know, the Anivia just burns through the Baron so quickly when you put that ult there. So definitely oh. understand the kit. Oh, Kelsey, no. Yeah, the thing is, you, oh, time you, to you kind of have to go the in there. there. <laughs> oh, yep. my God, oh, no. No. <laughs> the directed <laughs> camera didn't even swap fast enough to follow the teleport. <laughs> oh, no. He died oh. instantly. He did. He did. It was like whack-a-mole, but Singe was the mole. And uh, another easy kill. Now they're just kind of filtering in 1v1, and that is a uh, war 1v5 rounder, and that is not what you do to win games of League of Legends. Another Infernal Drake does go over to Team Gov as well. And, uh, you know, 
We talked about it being pretty close earlier in the game, Monty, but I feel like it's all uh, elementary at this point for Team Gov to uh, close it out. I mean, you, you still have the Baron buff. Now you've actually gone back and purchased full HP. They're still yeah. down two players. Be another in him. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, I, sometimes man. you just got to throw bodies at them to throw them, to, to slow them down, Doa. Otherwise, they might be able to end on this, so. Let the, let the damage hit the Orn. Let the damage hit the Orn. <laughs> there goes the uh, inhibitor. Uh, Kichi does take a lot of damage. Clutch heal, actually. Coming in to save him. Meanwhile, legit Korea not going to survive coming out of that Zonia's. And so, a little bit of life left in uh oh all right all right they found uh governor polis as well so a little bit of life left in uh team buffacorn here just they, slapping uh, the like chain on the Victoria. governor <laughs> team gov delved too greedily and too deep <laughs> they did it's a yeah. little too much though there and you know they also had used a lot of their important ults uh before they had even tried to push forward towards ending the game but it ends up there that because Kelsey went in on the tower and they did pop those ults, especially the curtain call, that they're actually able to slow that push and get some important shutdown gold as well. You know, for a game that where they've lost two inhibitors, the fact that they're only down 7k gold is not awful, actually. Yeah, I mean, it could be worse. <laughs> it really has been uh, Kapari, though, on this Silas, playing a pretty amazing game. Look at that. He's thinking about going after the gin here but no oh, no 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 oh, no you're, you're dead, dead. The w? my friend oh there it is oh, oh the mist here All comes right. chris do it can he reach it no doesn't yeah. want to go after him now carson chris finished ravenous hydra so the aoe damage coming off this ezreal is going to be pretty brutal if true. the members of team gov do decide to group up true it's not over yet it's not over yet it's well it's pretty much over but it's it's technically <laughs> not over the game is not actually ended so we do have that at least all right well a lull in the action governor polis decent amount of cc oh no pyrotechnics gets caught can he finish him off yeah it's a wide open space a little bit easier to chase the singe here too pirate it trying to keep key through the uh, through the weeds <laughs> can he do it using the alcove the first time anyone ever has he's gonna blast code back over oh <laughs> but it took all five members to take him down but they finally did kichi with another kill 13 1 13 because why not absolutely why? insane kichi's performance here casual 26 kda not bad lcs teams are you taking notes <laughs> probably not <laughs> but it's a pretty good gin game <laughs> True shot barrage, who nearly takes out Governor Charm. Polis. Yeah, they're going to turn their attention on to Kelsey Mosier again. Ultimate does not connect with anyone from the Orn. Now they're going to turn around. Spence Coin able to get everyone out. All right. All right. Here we go. Curtain call from Silas. Stole it away. Legit Korea does pop that Zonia. They're going to turn around onto Carson, who does flash away. That Ezreal doing a lot of damage, though, and they do take out Kowalczyk on the rel. They're staying alive <laughs> somehow, Doha. They are. Although we are Stand reaching down. a point where <laughs> Baron's going to come back up in 30 seconds, and we have yep. the sole point in just a minute left right now. Ooh. Oh, no! Spence coin! Oh, dear. All right, two kills, though. Legit Korea does give over another one right after that. Kapari doesn't connect with the chains there. Meanwhile, Governor Polis coming in, trying to be a hero. 1v3 doesn't work. No eggs available. I mean, Kapari might have just gotten them the dragon, or the Baron, rather, by coming yeah. in with that teleport from behind. He's Possibly. making all the plays right now. Kichi barely managing to escape. Baron is up. Pain's yeah. going down. They know. It's now or never. I mean, you got to take some drastic measures here if yeah. you're going to win you this game. You're team Buffercorn. Yeah. He's going to back, though. No. No, no, no. So I think the logic okay. here is that they want to set up for this dragon that's coming up because they know that Governor Polis can't be there fast enough because he doesn't have TP in the top lane. So All right. All right. There, is a, there is an advantage that they can push out this wave and then set up to prevent the soul point. I would have gone Ooh. a little harder, Doa, personally. I would have gone for that Baron. I know. I know. Years of uh, years of playing games with me has, has made you more aggressive, and, then, and that's valuable. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Big all. Onto Team Buffercore, and they're going to turn this one right around, though, on K to Kowalczyk. That Urel, or that Rel, rather, went in a little bit too aggressive. All right, that's going to give them an Infernal Drake. They might be able to uh, deny the soul here. We'll see. That's a curtain call. 
Pyro blocking a little bit of that damage, but this dragon is going down really quickly. Maybe gonna seal with the curtain call. No legit creep comes in. Oh, he did! He stole it! He stole it! Kichi, what a hero! Stealing the red dragon away. Stealing the infernal drake. I can't believe what I just saw getting a double kill out of it as well. Kichi for MVP. I don't care what you say. That was a game winning move. He saved his fourth bullet on the yeah. curtain call in yeah. order to get the steal on the Infernal Drake for Soul. What an amazing play. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been so hyped. <laughs> 16, 1, and 14. You can't spell domination without Kichi because that would make it a misspelled version of domination. <laughs> Kichi's having a good game on the gym. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Full build yeah, gin. This is it, the gin yeah. dream right here. 16 really one is. and 14. Gin to win. And they're going to take out these uh, Nexus turrets, and that is going to be it. Governor Polis, his team, Team Gov, led to victory by this insane gin from Kichi, and they will take it. <laughs> GG. <laughs> Carson with the matter, leave it at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh. Uh... That was that was really fun. That was really fun. It's great to have uh, Governor Polis, you know, coming in here and, and willing to spend his time to play some games with the fans, picking up the big win there. I'm gonna look at some advanced stats, though. Are you ready? Oh, I actually want to know how much damage this Jin did. Thirty-seven thousand. Legit Korea actually did thirty-three thousand. Governor Polis did eighteen, so pretty respectable right there. Thirty-seven though, you'd expected more than that given the how hard uh, we we did see Kichi <laughs> carrying there. That was. Uh -huh. uh, I was uh, quite impressive, but yeah, really fun stuff. It was really, really beautiful. I mean, Kichi just playing a, a great gin in that you stay back, you use that range. He had kind of that old west skin going on, you know, so a little bit of Colorado synergy there, a little bit of maybe Casa Bonita synergy there as well. They do the, they do the old west photo things. We got to bring Casa Bonita back in. <laughs> yeah, go to Casa Bonita once they open back up. Help local Colorado. Uh, Restaurants? We theme, can't let this theme restaurants. Die. Can't let die. <laughs> That's right. So I believe we're gonna get uh, Governor Polis on the line yeah. with us soon to chat. Yeah. yeah. Before we do that, by the way, guys, this is for ETH Denver, which is an Ethereum and blockchain hackathon. So for this week, uh, you can head over to ethethdenver.com. They do have bounties if you are a blockchain developer. So lots right. of fun stuff. They have done it annually. Obviously, you have to do it remotely this year, but it's great to have a little bit of esports as well involved in a larger event. Indeed. Oh, man, it was a ton of fun. And I, I think we have Governor Polis on the line right now. Can you can you hear us, Governor? Yeah, you do. ETH Denver was uh, it's just a great. I mean, everybody should come back in person next year. It's absolutely incredible. Last year was just amazing. And I'm glad we're doing some stuff online this year. And I'm glad I got to uh, to play. So thanks for thanks for streaming it. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of uh, incredible, you you played a pretty incredible uh, Anivia in the top lane. I'm not, I'm not making that up. You, you got some little MV1 kills. You were keeping up in CS like. I, I've heard it's between Anivia and Maokai. That that's that's your yeah. main. Do, do you do you actually have one that you favor? It's time to be honest. Um, it's time to come clean. Oh, about I don't it. know. I, it was fun. This was my first streaming game, so I'm glad it was a victory. I I, uh, I held my own. What was I three five sixteen? I mean, you know, I, I held cool. my own. Um, yep. Whose whose call was the the Baron? Because with Anivia, you guys could do it really fast. That was a really good call for you guys to pick that up. Helped you close out the game. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we were all talking the whole time. So good communications is key. So we were just, you know, we were we were talking the whole time and we, we saw that, uh, you know, we saw where they were and we knew we had time to grab Baron. I think we were up already. Uh, we were pretty dominant the whole game. You know, they, they came back a little bit towards the end, uh, but I th think we, we had it. But um, yeah, Baron, Baron was a big plus and I think we had uh, most of the dragons. I think they got the first and then we got the next the next few. <laughs> were you guys hyped when uh, the Jin when Kichi stole the final yeah. soul dragon with the fourth shot on oh, the Jin? It was awesome. <laughs> that was just great. I mean, that was just absolutely incredible. Yeah, to get to steal that dragon. It was just sort of the nail in the coffin for them. Yeah. yeah, really fun stuff. So let's talk a little bit about ETH Denver. So what do you like about this event and what what do you why do you uh, enjoy promoting it on behalf of Colorado? Well, Colorado is really um, open to blockchain. We have some, you know, we have uh, exemption for Digital Tokens Act, exemption from our security laws. We have a great community here um, of developers, hackers. Um, last year, there were just so many people that came together at ETH Denver, and it was just a really, really fun event. Uh, and it will be again next year. So I think, you know, Colorado is really a center of, you know, innovative thinking, and and um, we're we're glad to host ETH, ETH Denver. 
All Excellent. right. Well, uh, yeah. Well, we appreciate you for uh, for playing the game and uh, doing the interview earlier and uh, getting involved with esports a little bit. Uh, I gotta ask, like, what what got you into esports uh, in in the first place? When did you kind of start watching? Well, well, I mean, I grew up gaming, so I don't I don't know. Like, I just I I, I played League. I'm a longtime player of League of Legends, so I mean, right. in fact, there was like a year or two where I didn't play and then came back to it. Um, but played it uh, really before it was even popular. Um, I think you mentioned I do like an Eevee and Maokai. Uh, the other ones I played, I mean, I played uh, Wukong, I've played, um, who else? You know, there's a few others I play here and there, but those are my two my two favorites. All right. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I guess uh, before we let you go, do you have any other uh, questions, Monty? Otherwise, uh, otherwise, you know, usually when I, I interview people in esports things, I ask if they do any, if they want to do any shout outs. I've never asked a sitting governor that before, but <laughs> he wants to shout but, out Casa Bonita. That's, that's oh, yeah. the theme of this broadcast. Can you Obviously, ask about you your appreciation for Casa Bonita? <laughs> You don't go for the food, right? <laughs> <laughs> we were um, talking about it earlier. And yeah. I, I literally said, you know, when I took Doa there for the first time when we were casting, we were doing some Overwatch right. in Denver. Right. And I hadn't been there in years. And the food was somehow even worse than I remembered it. But the experience overall was even better. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good way of putting it. It's, it's, it's absolutely fun. And we have kids. You know, our kids are uh, six and nine. And, and they yeah. loved it. We went, you know, before the... Uh, pandemic and all and and so i think it's it's a great experience yeah just just you know eat beforehand and and, uh, <laughs> and then head on over but yeah no and this was a fun experience too i've been playing for years but i never streamed a game and i'm just glad i wasn't embarrassed you know playing with all those uh top players you know politician streaming is becoming more popular all the time if you like do you ever do you <laughs> think we're going to see any uh any uh governor uh polis yeah. streams in the near future i am up for it you name it i'll do it for charity i'll do it for grudge match <laughs> against uh other elected officials you name it i'm there <laughs> all right uh, well, the the government among us match uh we, we can get aoc <laughs> back uh have have that <laughs> she was on there playing uh among us with, with some of the other streamers so I now, like now it's time <laughs> government among us i mean it is metaphorically like among us i'm sure sometimes but <laughs> that's so true who's the imposter we, we won't get into that that's a little bit deeper than this interview is supposed to get into <laughs> yeah it well, seems like thanks, for stream, thanks for streaming me we'll totally do this again sometime and i know Perfect. colorado is a special place in your heart monte cristo and of course uh, we're just excited we have such a great uh eth community here gaming community you name it esports community it's, it's really great well, thank you for your All time, right. Governor. It was fun to cast you. Take care. Right. Thanks. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Governor Jared Polis of Colorado, champion in this show match today. And it was a really entertaining game. That was that was so much fun. Uh, I, had, I had an awesome time. How about you? <laughs> yep. And thanks for all the college students and uh, people who are affiliated with Colorado from the, the eSports scene uh, who have joined us to play in this game or to cast in this game. We really appreciate yeah. everybody's time as, as just something fun to do. Yep, that's right. And so uh, with that, that will end uh, our segment here. But ETH Denver is continuing. I'm being told with DJ Chill Room. So don't miss that. It's uh, going to be sick. But thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of ETH Denver. And hopefully see you guys again in the future.